speech title which Deck has got is everything you want to know about Zoom and other bits and bobs. Immediately, we know what this is going to be about. But to give you a little bit of background, the purpose of this particular presentation is to look at Zoom basics. It's also to look at the requirements for a proper and even professional setup, as well as how the host can control a meeting and all the technical bits, types of microphone and the correct acoustics for using in these scenarios, how to play music using Zoom, which is actually one of the closest kept secrets and not many people know how to do it. The secrets of lighting, how best to light yourself that is, of course, and the importance of VT or VR, video tape or video recording systems. And lastly, virtual backgrounds, because we can put whatever we want behind us. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We've gone through the agenda, so you know what I'm going to be talking about. Let's get on quickly because I haven't got much time. Tiny bit on zoom basics now i've been very pleasantly surprised since all this lockdown started that the zoom etiquette has been very good everybody's learned very quickly to mute their microphone and keep it muted unless you're asked to speak if you want to speak put your hand up it's as simple as that put your hand up and the host should ask you then to speak unmute your microphone and speak the host can mute all the microphones, but nowadays the rules have changed and he can't unmute them. You can only unmute your own microphone. Very important to do that. The lovely thing is that most of the meetings nowadays, people know the deaf clapping sign, the international deaf clapping, and that's simply that. I love to see it. I love to see it. You see it at the Olympics all the time. It's lovely. Now, at the end of this meeting, or presentation, I expect to get a standing ovation. So I wonder how you do that. Do you do that, maybe? Is that a standing ovation? I hope so. I hope so. Have a pilot's list. Pilot's list. I have a pilot's list. And this is the pilot's list. I call it that because if you were a pilot and you were going in a 747 to Australia, you wouldn't dream of starting up the engines without going through the pilot's list. And that's in the way of a manual, which the co-pilot will have as well. And the two of you go through and you just check off everything that is in all the controls in the plane. Check all that stuff. I've got silly stuff here like clear the cache, which means from the internet. Clearing that makes your computer work faster and better and more efficiently. Empty recycle bin, or bins, if you have uh, uh, cloud and all that sort of stuff. Make sure all that's done. Make sure you've got rid of all the strange little apps and all that that you've got in your taskbar down. They'll all be draining power. Very, very important. Make sure before the meeting that if you're going to use anything, like if you want to record the show, or the presentation, make sure you ask the host's permission beforehand, be well beforehand day beforehand or whatever, because he has to then get into his accounts setting within zoom.us to change that to allow you to record, usually. And also to allow you to share, that means putting up videos and photographs and all that sort of stuff. So make sure that you get in touch with your host beforehand. Virtual backgrounds, a lot of hosts won't allow virtual backgrounds. I do, I don't mind, I think they're good. I think they look lovely. But you have to ask your host beforehand. And here's a, here's a silly one. Make sure that you use the, te the space bar. Now, I'm one of those silly people, I know all about it, and I never use the space bar. I always go looking for the mouse to go over here and get the da 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 da. Use the space bar. And by the way, use one of these, a wireless mouse. Because if you try to get something done on your laptop, you'll find that you're leaning forward into the, to try and get at it, depending on how far your laptop is away. And also then, when you're typing, you're doing anything, well, that will happen. You'll be bouncing all over the screen. So, do that. I live and die by that. Very simple bit of kit. Do it. 
Number two, the basic requirements for a proper, even a professional show. Now, you have to have the camera above your eye line. That was just something that Liz Taylor, the very ancient lady actor, said years ago. And she insisted all the time. She had a little ruler with her, and I think it was six inches. The camera had to be six inches above her eye line. But that was, the cameras were further away, and there were massive cameras. I would, I would suggest two or three inches above your eye line. And she always explained that it made your face look much slimmer and much nicer, it made your neck look better. Now, I've got a dreadful turkey neck, <laughs> which is a curse. I hate it. I hate it to death. But then again, Cliff Richard has got it. Hank Marvin has got it. Loads of people have got it in my, bit, my game. Nothing I can do about it. But the high camera, because normally people are using a laptop and use a laptop, Honestly, always use a laptop because it's so easy you can walk around with it and all that. iPad, no, no, I wouldn't use iPads and phones, only in an emergency. But normally people are looking down and it just makes the face look wrong all the time. Lighting, very important, and I have a whole section which I'll cover lighting. You can get an excellent lighting rig with green screen, white screen, black screen for... Uh, last one I bought for somebody was 69 quid, which is amazing. And that will give you fully professional results. Earbuds, I swear by them, yes. Never use the, the, uh, the sound out of your laptop. It, it just doesn't work. It, it echoes the... I know they've got echo, echo cancelling on your laptop and all that, but don't use it. It, it compromises the sound. Microphones. Now, microphones. I was asked uh, oh, a few years ago now, about 10 years ago, I think, the, the company in, in China, <laughs> and they made a complete copy, an exact copy of a Neumann U87 microphone. They cost about 4,500, 5,000, 7,000. This one. I was asked to evaluate, they gave me two of them, to evaluate a black one and this one. Good looking microphones, they work, they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And you can get them on the net, stag. You can get them on the net for, I've seen them for as little as 60 pounds. And you will have superb professional sound for that. Don't ever be tempted to go for something like this. Look great, look tremendous, 50s sort of thing, Elvis Presley and all that. The sound is absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. The value is I don't even talk about them because about 10 years ago, Apple, in their wisdom, changed the protocol for the tip ring sleeve. Can you see that on the end? Tip ring sleeve. They changed the protocol and they made, there's always the positive was the tip and they changed it to it being the earth. With the result, I blew up two USB mixers recently in trying to use these with adapters. Don't even go near them. Although, let you know the secret, I just ordered one today. But it has, it's a proper one built for proper mixers with an X, what's called an XLR plug on the, on the end of it. How a host can control a meeting, the technical bits. The host has a horrible job, especially nowadays. I do a lot of it. Uh, I do my Corona Diaries. There's a good plug. Corona Diaries on Sunday with my brother, 2.30. Have a look. It's very good. Controlling it as a host is quite a nightmare. I'm absolutely wasted after doing it. Wasted after doing it because you've got to think of entertaining all the time into the camera and also when you're down trying to get things ready down here and it is a nightmare get to know i tell you what to do as a host get to know how to get to your account quick that's to go into zoom.us into your account and settings to change things on the fly you must 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 do that hosting is hard it is hard and it's awkward that's what it is. it's a great word it's awkward you have to allow recording. I've spoken about that. You have to allow sharing. And that's when 
you have to go into the box on the side where all the participants are and allow sharing. You have to allow them to use virtual backgrounds. You have to allow people to enter the meeting, go out of the meeting, and you have to then allow entry with password. Very important, password. Honestly, password. You must have the ID of the meeting password. Do not, under any circumstances, use the meeting URL. Well, that is how all the trolls and those terrible, nasty people who uh, Zoom bomb, they call it nowadays. They're co actually called actors. That's the professional name for them. Where they come into your meeting and they use blasphemies and bad words and all that. And they will also show pornography. They think it's very funny. People say, why do they do it? Answer, because they can. It's as simple as that. Learn as a host how to pinpoint the host when speaking. Very important. It's down the bottom of the settings. I was stuck for two, three weeks where I didn't know how to have myself showing on the screen. And it drove me mad for two or three weeks. Nobody could help me. And then in the end, I searched and searched and searched. And there it was. It's down the bottom of the settings in your account, which is on zoom.us. Now we're getting on to the nice bits. Microphones. Which microphone? Get asked that all the time. Is it the microphone or is it the acoustics? Just check this out. This is a quick roundup on microphones. Now, the one that's most commonly used and the one that you see mostly for good quality is this baby, which Barry Miles always refers to as a little bald man sitting in front of me. But uh, it's the one that will give the best sound and it's a condenser microphone, quite expensive, uh, two inch gold dia diaphragm inside it and that's what gives the good sound. What you pay for is what's called the noise floor. In other words, when it's when nothing is going into it, then it is totally silent or as near totally si silent as damn it. That's what you pay for. And that's when you're recording somebody like Adele with just a piano or maybe a, a guitar player or maybe a, a, a whoever, just a, a, a classical piano in a concert room. You want total silence from this baby and that's what you pay for. So that's, you know now what this sounds like, and this is the top quality. Now we go on to the next most used one. The next most used one is this, which is an SM58. And this is absolutely bog standard. You'll see this in every rock show right throughout the world. It's been around since, oh, the 50s, 60s. I think about the 60s, possibly. But it's the absolute industry standard, not expensive, about 70 to 90 quid. Uh, and this, you can see how old this one. Famous advert for this one is a television advert where they had a guy actually knocking a six inch nail into a board with this microphone and then just plugging it in and singing into it. And that's how sturdy they are and that's how they've got such a good reputation. You notice that my lip, my lip, lip is on the microphone and that's how to use it. M wonderful quality, but the problem is when you go more than an inch, two inch away, three inches away, you just disappear completely. Whereas with the big jobby, you could, it, there's very little difference in sound no matter where you are in the room. And that is why these are so popular in rock concerts because it actually is a proximity microphone, so you have to be very close to it. So that means that, say, loud guitars and all sorts of stuff, drums and everything all around, are not picked up into the microphone, only the voice. Of course, what most people use is the microphone in the actual computer itself or in the camera, if you've got a separate camera, which we'll get onto later. A lot of faults to that. And the most important thing to realize is it's very, very little to do with the microphone. It's all to do with the acoustics of the room. So this now is the usual setup that anybody would have is the microphone in the laptop and with the speakers on. I, sh I don't even have to have those on because I should be able to hear everything through the speakers on the computer. The next one. This is now the internal microphone of the computer and the computer camera itself. I don't like it very much. It's, I, it's all about skin tones. 
in television and films, it's all about skin tones. If anybody's old enough, they may remember they used to have the test card that played right through the night for televisions. And that was for cameras and that too. So all the cameras in the studio were lined up to that. So they had the, the face quality exactly human and nice and calm and nice, natural, natural is the word. Of course, a lot of people will be asking about these jobbies, uh, which are very popular, very popular, and I've used them uh, when Skype started first. I was using them a lot because we use them a lot for radio interviews, funny enough, because it was digital sound, so it was supposedly pure sound. I've never heard a good set yet uh, on Zoom, never heard a good set yet, and I think I'll prove that point. Uh, just listen to the difference between this microphone, Logitech, you know, decent brand, wasn't cheap, wasn't cheap. And see, do you notice the difference? <laughs> I would think you would. Well, this one I don't like at all. Uh, the sound is quite good, given that you've got tremendous acoustics here. It's the acoustics in the room. This this room, this is my studio actually. The green screen, obviously a green screen behind me. But this is my studio. So the 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 if you clap your hands, there's no there's no slap back at all. No parallel walls. It's great, great. And that's what it's all about. It's very little to do with the microphone. It's all to do with the acoustics. This is the typical lounge sort of situation. Uh, this is it. so you just see the acoustics, the acoustics and the lighting that you will achieve. But it's quite good, quite good lighting actually. But the acoustics are a little bit echoey. Let's go to another room. A bedroom would probably give better acoustics, but however, you've always got the, the, the mirrored wardrobes and all that sort of stuff, and you got a lot of windows, a lot of windows, and that's all always going to echo the sound. In this vestibule, totally glass surrounded, yeah? So I'm sure, I can't tell what it sounds like, but I'm sure it just sounds echoey to me. And of course, this is a, a typically echoey place. And it's just, just to show you so that you hear the difference in acoustics and what proper acoustics sound like. This is awful, awful beyond belief. People think it's wonderful because it's echoey. No. For Zoom work, no thank you very much. So here we are, back to the favourite microphone uh, that we all like to use. And of course, you notice earbuds. Because using the speakers on the computer, no, don't do it, don't do it. Sound becomes echoey and horrible. I now hope that you are an expert on <laughs> microphones. <laughs> Playing music on Zoom, I've sort of touched on it as all the way through this. It's the closest close to guarded secret. I've been in touch with Zoom themselves and they simply won't help you. They won't help you. But what I have found out in the nine weeks now of the lockdown from experimentation is that you must ensure that you're using your own computer sound. If a, an icon comes up or a window comes up and says turn off or computer sound or anything like that, don't obey it. You must, must, must click everything that says use computer sound. There's another thing as well, use original sound. We've touched on that. The top left hand side, you will see an icon, a uh, window, sorry, not an icon a window which is saying use original sound and I've explained to you that is in your audio settings which are accessed by going into the carrot beside the microphone icon bottom left hand side. In the audio settings then I've said you've got to disable all the enhancing software. Let's get on to lighting now. Lighting is the most important thing, probably, in all of this lark is uh, Zoom meetings, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. 
It's um, the holy grail, really. If you get your lighting right, uh, the visuals are 80% of what you do. Content is only 20%, but the visuals, if you don't get the visuals right, if, if it just, just is badly lit, you're dead in the water. Took me an awful long time to learn about it. Um, I, I spent two years of my life uh, on the road doing concerts and uh, filming a video uh, with a DVD. The results were disastrous because I just simply didn't understand about lighting and I couldn't get anybody to tell me. There was nobody new really, except the top television people. And then, then of course they were using equipment that was thousands, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 quid cameras. And they can, they can deal with lighting. But I then found the most important thing and the only thing you've got to know is you have got to light as much behind as you light in front. Once you understand that, you've got it nailed. Most people just put the lights in front and the, f the face gets completely washed out. Now I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. I've got a couple of uh, big lights here on the side of me, which are pointing at the back, at the green screen, okay? Now, if I disconnect them, now I think this lighting is pretty good, pretty good. If I disconnect them, look what happens. Look at my face. It's completely washed out. Yeah, it's absolutely completely washed out. But put in the lighting behind, which is exactly the same as the lighting in front, by the way. Totally natural. The easiest way to explain this is that you've seen people with on Zoom and they're sitting in front of a window. And they're, you can see the window, but their face is completely black. Yeah, it's dark. And everybody says, oh, move away from the window. Everybody understands that. Now, what I'm talking about is exactly the reverse. Okay, have you got that? So if you have no light behind you, it's black. Black behind you. And then the automatic sensor in the camera will look at the overall picture and it will sense blackness. It's not lit, behind you it's not lit. So therefore it will open up the aperture and completely blast you out. That is standing in front of a window. So the lighting with no lighting behind, which I'm on about, and that completely blasts out my face, blasts out my face. Turn around. And that is the situation if the that's what I see most on uh, members zoom meetings that's what I see most and everybody shouts oh get away from the window so I would suggest the best situation is to get yourself into some situation oh, no it's impossible it's impossible so no matter what you do without proper lighting it's it's just impossible to to sort yourself out. No, 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 no. No matter what way you go, you're always going to be having, you're always going to have problems. So there we are. Now you're the expert in lighting. Well, are you the expert on lighting? <laughs> Let's get on to the importance of VT or VR. Well, that's an unusual VT or VR videotape. Of video recording. Unfortunately, VR tends to mean nowadays virtual reality. So it's been hijacked. In our industry, it was always video recording, but there we are. I noticed Keith Lemon uses the VT, and it's always funny because it's video tape. We don't use tape anymore, Keith. There are 11 steps. 11 steps to setting up a VR. Uh, uh, may I say uh, the reason why VR is so important and VT is so important, if you're doing something that's information loaded like this presentation, if you video record it, then you can edit it and tighten it all up and make sure that everything is succinct. There are 11 steps to having a VT play properly and what we call seamlessly seamlessly that's so you don't notice what's going on if I'm doing a live broadcast 
and I, my eyes will be wandering down all the time because I'm getting things set up. So. Lastly, virtual background, I or nay, whether the user or not. There's one thing to know about green screen. It's not just painting a wall green. No, that's not at all. It must be muslin, which is a very soft cloth from India. Muslin cloths we know from covering lamb, meat, anything like that, you know it. It's a very soft cloth and that's why it works so well. This is muslin behind me. The reason why I feel that you should use a virtual background, especially if you're a professional person, say a doctor, consultant, psychiatrist, anybody like that in many of the professions where they're paying you a lot, lot, lot of money. They want to see a chaise lounge in the background. They want to see a nice desk. They want to see nice leather furniture. If you just got a few pictures on the wall at home and that's what you say, no. Because if they're paying, I always say this, if they're paying £200, £500, £1,000 for a consultation or whatever, they want to see a Mulsanne Bentley outside your house in the driveway. That's what they want to see. They want to see you wearing Gucci, Armani, all that sort of stuff. That's what they want to see. So I would suggest if you're in a profession, no matter what profession you, you think of, here's an idea. Get a good camera, a DSLR camera. I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to take a photograph because I'm lucky. I live in a lovely, lovely place. And I'm going to take a photograph in the garden looking at the place. It's palatial. And then I'm going to put it on virtual screen, virtual background, and then people will think I'm in the garden. And that will be very believable. But if, as I say, you're a consultant and all that, why not do that? Photograph a really good professional Harley Street place and then put it behind. Nobody will question you. Finally, I'd like to say that as regards dress, always be the best dressed person in the hotel venue, in the theatre, in the stadium, and particularly on Zoom. Especially if you're being paid an awful lot of money. Or if you aspire to be paid an awful lot of money. Now this is a separate little item which I've added in because everybody wants to know about the 11 steps for seamless videotape and video recording playing during your Zoom broadcast. It's not easy, I'll tell you that, it's not easy. You can normally share your screen in Zoom during a meeting messily messily but i like to do it right i like to f like to feel like you're just watching a television show and it's right and you may be like me you may want to do that so there are 11 steps i'll do it slowly so that you can see now first of all you have to have all the videos available in your bottom taskbar now to do that you have to exit screen to the top right hand side i hope the cursor is big so you can see it and the toolbar now miraculously appears down the bottom that is where this is the folder now to get to that folder you need to go onto that icon which is your computer icon go to that icon click on it and then all your various stuff will come up now all my stuff for this type of video uh, this sort of program is in the Corona Diaries folder, there it is, and that's that's say the this is the one I want to play. I'm going to double click on there. It's slow today. I don't know why. Now I have to be very quick here because when it comes up, there's four seconds of silence at the start. So I want to. Aha! I caught me that time. That will be heard by your the people looking in but everything i'm doing here will not be seen 
it'll only be seeing what is capturing on the screen so i need to diminish that now so we come off full screen and that will now so that will now allow me to access the zoom itself and there i am there so i click on there and they'll go back to me what i need to do now is people are just seeing me in full screen at the moment or whatever they want in gallery view or screen view they can't see all this stuff i'm doing behind the scenes that's why i sort of go blank and i go gazing into the sky and all that so now i have to now go to the share screen share screen and there is the film that i want so i click on now this is very quick you have to be very quick here so i click on there once i share that video will go live so i have to be now desperately quick there are three things i need to do quick to be seamless i need to click share full screen and start and that's what will happen i messed that up a little bit because i was talking to you <laughs> but that's the way it's done that's the way it's done and uh, I hope it works for you. Now, uh, this will be available on YouTube. Tomorrow, probably. And I'll finish with this. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, my name is Declusky. If you haven't enjoyed what you've seen today, my name is Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs>